and thank you for joining us at the People Behind Your Water. My name is Teresa Alvarado and I'm the manager of the Office of CEO Support and Communications at the Santa Clara Valley Water District. The Santa Clara Valley Water District manages an integrated water resources system that includes the supply of clean, safe water, flood protection, and stewardship of streams on behalf of Santa Clara County's 1.8 million people. The district effectively manages 10 dams and surface water reservoirs, three water treatment plants, a state-of-the-art water quality laboratory, nearly 400 acres of groundwater recharge ponds, and more than 275 miles of streams. We provide wholesale water and groundwater management services to local municipalities and private water retailers who deliver drinking water directly to homes and businesses throughout Santa Clara County. Today we're joined by Nock Nguyen. He is the engineering uh, unit manager for the West and Guadalupe Watersheds Group here at the Water District. Welcome, Nock. Thank you. Thank you for being with us today. Um, we've heard a lot about uh, you know, the Water District, what is our role in the county, but what is your role here at the district? Well, uh, I am one of the engineering unit manager in the Watershed Capital Division. And our job in the division is to plan, design, and construct a uh, new project. In this case, for the watershed, for the district. And some of the projects that I work on uh, include flood protection project along Guadalupe River, uh, freshwater wetland uh, restoration project, mm -hmm. uh, stream and maintenance program, uh, work that we do uh, for the district and but mainly capital improvement project new construction for the water district okay that, those are big projects I imagine they also take a long time to plan and then uh, and then construct and maintain as well uh, you, you're correct uh, depending on the complexity uh, of each project usually our flood protection project uh, tend to take longer because okay. those are multi-million dollars and it involves a large number of stakeholders mm. in the county uh, and regulatory agency oversight. Uh, some of these projects uh, we participate with the federal government like the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, okay. uh, California Coastal Conservancies uh, because we don't have adequate funding to uh, sponsor the whole project so we have to leverage the limit, limited dollars that we have locally uh, with auto funds to get these projects completed. Uh, so with multiple agency cost-sharing projects like that, they tend to take longer. Okay, probably the most famous in the Water District's history is the Guadalupe River in the downtown area. Um, but we're not here to talk about that today. We're going to talk about another project in a minute. But can we start by uh, describing what is a watershed? Uh, watershed, a watershed is uh, it's a land area where it drains the water to a common waterway. Okay. Uh, in Santa Clara County, uh, our stream system of uh, streams and creeks catch the rain mm -hmm. or the runoff from storm drain and carry that water to the north, uh, to San Francisco Bay or to the south, to Monterey Bay. Oh, okay. Uh, for uh, our county, uh, we do have five watersheds, and four of them drain north to San Francisco Bay, and one of them, the Uvas Yagas, drains south to Monterey Bay. And that one is in South County? That's correct. That watershed. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So where is the Guadalupe watershed, and what are its major features? Uh, the Guadalupe watershed is the second largest watershed that we have in the county. It uh, contains an area of about 170 miles square, square okay. miles. Uh, it's located on the east side of Santa Cruz Mountains, uh, next to the summit of Loma Prieta. And it drains uh, toward Guadalupe River. And Guadalupe River as it drains toward the north okay. to San Francisco Bay. It's uh, uh, it's the main uh, river that, that, you know, we have Ross Creek, Los Gatos Creek, uh, Canoas Creek, uh, as Guadalupe makes its way to the north. And Los Alamitos as well? That's correct. 
So um, what is the history of human activity in that watershed that makes it so unique in Santa Clara County? Uh, Guadalupe watershed and Guadalupe River uh, are known for uh, mercury okay. uh, in, the, in the waterway because of the historical use, uh, land use of this area. And mercury in sediment in the waterway in Guadalupe watershed can trace its route back to the gold rush okay. uh, in the 1800s uh, where mercury was needed to, uh, it, it's a critical element in the process of extracting gold mm -hmm. from the ore. Uh, and in fact, uh, Almaden, uh, the new uh, Almaden mine. Right, uh, Almaden Quicksilver. Quicksilver, yes. Now. Yeah. Uh, at one time was the largest mercury mining uh, operation in North America. Really? Yes. So we supplied a lot of this critical element that was used in the, the gold rush, That's in correct. the gold mining era. Right. Interesting. And so that has left remnants in the watershed. That's correct. So the remnant, the uh, tailing or the sediment, the soil contained in mercury that, that was left behind the operation now uh, every time we have run off, uh, they got eroded. All of that uh, sediment uh, contained in mercury uh, move away from those uh, uh, mining up site and get into our way and move down the system. You know, uh, go through Alamitos Creek, get into our reservoir creeks and streams, and then ultimately get to the bay. So what have we been doing about it? Uh, obviously, there's a historic element, but it, that it continues to move. This element yeah. continues to move through the system. What has the district done so far? Yeah, Mercury, Mercury uh, once it get into the waterway and under certain condition uh, could convert to a very toxic form. Uh, you probably have heard methyl mercury, which is a, a soluble form and it's very toxic. Uh, and it's known that it, it could uh, bioaccumulate from uh, vegetation up to fish to the bird that eat the fish and the human who eat the, uh, the fish or the okay. bird. Uh, and that could be very toxic uh, to human health. Uh, for the water district, uh, we have done our share of trying to identify uh, outreach to the community about the, the issue associated with mercury and do our share of cleaning up uh, when we can uh, the mercury uh, in the waterway. Uh, yearly, every year, uh, our stream maintenance program where we remove sediment mm -hmm. uh, in our waterway, especially along the Guadalupe River to maintain uh, the flood conveyance capacity uh, for flood protection, we do remove sediment and those sediment contain mercury. So that's one way for us to uh, remove uh, uh, mercury-containing sediment from the waterway. Okay. Uh, we also uh, take on other projects, special projects, uh, like the recently completed Jack Gold project. Jack where, Gold, yes, right. Where okay. the district uh, fixed some of the erosion, eroded bank, uh, removed some of the mercury-containing uh, soil uh, along that system, and then revegetate uh, to prevent it from eroding uh, or moving offsite. Okay, I know this report that we produced, it's called Mercury in the Guadalupe Watershed, talked about some of the previous projects that we've completed, the Jacques Gulch uh -huh. that you just mentioned, Los Alamitos Creek, the stream maintenance program that you're mentioning, removing the sediment, the Guadalupe and Almaden Reservoir uh, studies that have been conducted, as well as now, Lake Almaden or Almaden Lake. Um, so we've heard quite a bit about that particular site. You know, Almaden Lake is an iconic feature in the Almaden Valley. What is, what is the problem with Almaden Lake as a site and a collection point for mercury sediment? Um, and what is being proposed to be done about it? Well, uh, Almaden Lake uh, is located right next to our headquarter buildings. Yeah. Uh, and it, it's a uh, John U site with city of San Jose. So there is a recreational element there too uh, with the lake and the park system there. Right. Uh, the lake itself, it's not a, it, it's a remnant uh, feature from the old gravel operation in the oh, past. Okay. So it's not a natural lake. 
Okay. Um, it was a quarry. It was okay. a quarry operation. Okay. A portion of the leg is very, very deep. It could be more than 35 feet deep mm. when it's uh, fully inundated with water. I mentioned earlier, uh, under certain conditions, uh, mercury would convert to metal, the, the toxic form metal mercury. Mm -hmm. And Almaden Lake, the current condition is prime for that. Okay. It's very deep, mm -hmm. uh, so the water uh, in the lake tend to be very stagnant. Uh, and when you have a stagnant uh, body of water and it's very deep, uh, the lower portion of the lake, the lower portion, the water in the lower portion of the lake uh, tend to lack oxygen. Mm. And that create uh, an environment where we call anaerobic, which mm -hmm. is uh, it lacks of oxygen. Sure. And it, it's an environment where uh, it's favorable for mercury to convert to metal mercury. Okay. And once metal mercury, the toxic form of mercury, is produced, uh, it get absorbed by the algae, by the vegetation there, and the vegetation get consumed by uh, the wildlife animal there, and then the, the fish okay. then okay. will... So, so you have a cycle where the toxic metal mercury accumulate from one tropic to another. And, and as it moves up the food chain, the food web, uh, the fish, the tissue of the fish, bioaccumulate the, the, the methyl mercury, which is very toxic. And again, the people then consume the fish. Or, or the birds bird, can, be, okay. can you know, consume the fish, and they will get affected by the methyl mercury. As far as the, uh, the water district, we have proposed a plan and study at the lake, uh, recognizing the uh, danger of uh, bioaccumulation and the production of methyl mercury at the lake. Uh, the district is proceeding uh, with the planning phase to look at uh, different alternatives or feasible alternatives where we can address uh, the, produc the production of methyl mercury and if we could reduce or eliminate the discharge of methyl mercury into the environment. Okay, so now we've addressed some of the upstream, I think it's upstream, uh, conditions that are contributing to the mercury deposition at Almaden Lake. We're concerned about the fish and the other wildlife that may be harmed from this methyl mercury, and we need to do something about it. Mm -hmm. And so the district has proposed several alternatives, is, is that correct, to addressing the problem there? Well, yeah, that's, that's part of our planning study. Oh, okay. uh, yeah. Uh, uh, just like any other capital improvement project as part of our planning phase, uh, we look at you know, feasible alternatives and a very critical part of that is to reach out to the community that we serve uh, and the local partner, in this case, City of San Jose, who mm -hmm. operates the park. So we will continue to work with our local partner and the community to identify and to uh, evaluate uh, feasible alternatives uh, that can meet our objectives of uh, eliminating the production and discharge of methyl mercury and yet at the same time uh, maintain the recreational sure. features on the landmark value of Almaden Lake. Sure. Let, me, let me just add on, if I may, uh, we mentioned uh, methyl mercury, but I mentioned the lake is not really a, a natural lake. Mm -hmm. uh, at Almaden Lake, Alamitos Creek, Okay. is captured in the lake. So that's, it's not a, a distinct uh, creek corridor. Okay. Uh, Alamitos Creek uh, discharge, discharged into Guadalupe River. And the Guadalupe River system is known for uh, a steelhead stream, which is a, a listed uh, fish uh, under the federal regulations. Okay. And still had used Guadalupe River and Alamitos Creek as a migration corridor yearly to go upstream for spawning. Okay. And then the, the juvenile fish also use the same waterway to migrate to the bay, to the ocean to grow. And in between the two lies Almaden Lake. That's correct. Um, to the south is Los Alamitos Creek, to the north is Guadalupe River. So we will show some project um, pictures, some site photos 
uh, for our viewers to see so they can see exactly what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. But I know that we had a meeting in June of last year to talk about um, the concerns at Almaden Lake. That's when we produced this special report piece. It was mailed out to the community. And then there was another meeting held in October uh, with members of the community, uh, very good turnout, and it was called a World Cafe, a conversation about Almaden Lake, where some project alternatives were described. We won't go into all the alternatives right now, but um, I think it's important to let folks know that this information is available on our website, and that what is the, what are the timelines for the next uh, public outreach? Right. Uh I mentioned earlier, outreach is an important part of our planning phase. Sure. Uh, right now, uh, from the last meeting in October, uh, we presented some of the conceptual alternatives to the community and we received valuable feedback. Our staff, project staff, uh, right now are evaluating uh, in further details those conceptual alternatives and the plan is uh, sometimes in February okay. 2013, uh, the whole team will be back uh, in front of the community uh, to present our findings uh, and uh, evaluations of those conceptual alternatives and uh, inform the community which one of those alternatives we think are feasible alternatives that we can carry to the next step. Uh, the next step for us then is to evaluate, do some more analysis of uh, those feasible alternatives and then start working on our environmental documentation okay. uh, so that in February of 2014 there will be a public review, uh, our environmental documents and engineering report okay. will be available uh, to the public. Uh, for review and comment. Okay, so I was at the October meeting, got a lot of great feedback on the project alternatives that were proposed, really trying to meet the project um, uh, objectives to remediate the problem, but also meet the community's needs and uh, desires for a lot of recreation and habitat mm -hmm. and, and beautification of the area. So uh, looking forward to hearing more about that. But you know that this uh, show is called The People Behind Your Water. So in that vein, I'd love to hear more about you. When did you come to the Santa Clara Valley Water District and what has been your career path here? Uh, I started at the district in uh, 1989 mm -hmm. as an assistant engineer. And so I've been here close to 23 years. Wow. And uh, one thing that I like about the work that we do here uh, one of the people behind our water is I get to work with very neat projects, very unique uh, projects anywhere from creating wetland, uh, design planning and construct wetland to uh, doing the same thing for flood protection project uh, to contribute to the flood protection uh, to the resident of Santa Clara County. Uh, along the way, I, only, I also get to work on the very first uh, multi-year stream maintenance program mm -hmm. that was back in 2002. It was uh, one of the first multi-year stream maintenance program for the Bay Area um, uh, that we successful, successfully completed. I also get to work on the first uh, Clean Sip Creek Spatial Tax Program mm -hmm. back in 2000 for the Water District when we were looking for uh, additional funding for the next 15 year of uh, flood protection and uh, ecosystem restoration enhancement for the county. Wow. Uh, and what was the wetlands project that you worked on? Uh, two of the wetland projects that we did uh, about five years ago, one is the uh, Coyote uh, Parkway okay. wetlands right at the uh, intersection of Metcalf and uh, 101. Mm -hmm. uh, that was a seven acre wetland, that upstream wetland that we uh, plan, design, constructed entirely by district staff. It wow. was the very first uh, freshwater wetland done by the water district. Uh, the second project that we did in south of Gilroy is called Pajaro Preserve, hmm. Pajaro uh, Freshwater Wetland, also uh, a mitigation project for our stream maintenance program. Uh, that project we created 
uh, nine acres of freshwater wetland. Uh, and it's, I don't want to, to give the impression that I'm the only one working on those projects. <laughs> I, as my role as a unit manager, a senior project manager, uh, I need help and support of, of the course. comprehensive team of water district fishery biologists, wetland biologists, uh, civil engineers, structural engineers. So all of those are people behind the water uh, sure. working with me to, to accomplish those projects. Well, it sounds like you've had a fascinating career here at the district so far, working on really important and interesting projects. And I know I've seen you firsthand working with the community. You are very responsive to community interest, and you're always willing and eager to, to reach out to community. So thank you, thank you so much for yeah. your partnership. Um, I just wanted to let our viewers know that we have a lot more information about the Almaden Lake Project on our website at valleywater.org. If you just type in Almaden Lake Project, you will see all the materials that I referenced. And if you'd like to sign up for our monthly e-newsletter, you'll receive information about future public meetings, about board agenda items where we're going to mm -hmm. discuss uh, this project in greater detail. The community is always available to attend those meetings. And we'll be also going out to neighborhood associations and other community meetings so that uh, this community and all of the region that are interested in this project can stay informed and engaged. And I'd like to invite everyone to join us on January 23rd. We'll be uh, having a special screening of a documentary entitled Klamath Basin, A Restoration for the Ages. For over a century, the Klamath River Basin, along the Oregon and California border, has faced complex water management disputes. This 60-minute public television documentary shows how diverse water interests ranging from tribes near the river to energy producer Pacific Corp, uh, farmers, municipalities, commercial fishermen, environmentalists, all came together in a groundbreaking compromise. This project really has parallels to discussions currently underway in California related to our Bay Delta project. Uh, so please join us. Again, that's on January 23rd. And please remember to stay flood safe. Our website is a great resource for flood tips, flood prevention information. And now you can also sign up for mobile notification of flood safety tips or flood alerts. All you have to do is text the word water to the short code phone number 84444. So please sign up, stay safe, and we hope to see you again next time on The People Behind Your Water. Thank you. That's what this is all about, is the fight for the control of the water. The water crisis in the scenic Klamath Basin has raged on for a hundred years and counting. Just about everything that can go wrong with Western water law has gone wrong in the Klamath. Um, as a power company, we are not in the business of removing dams. We are in the business of generating power. You can't be a Karuk without salmon. Sometimes the right decision isn't always a popular decision. Can an historic compromise restore peace, fish, and clean water to this vast river community? Stay with us for a special presentation of The Klamath Basin, A Restoration for the Ages. Hello, I'm Frances Fisher. I'm standing above the Iron Gate Dam, one of several hydroelectric dams along the Klamath River. Now, the disputes about this river are epic, but that's changing as area fishermen, farmers, tribes, environmental groups, and the power company that owns this dam are coming together 
to craft what many believe will be a lasting peace to the watershed. But before we get to that, let's listen to a little history. The Klamath Basin along the California-Oregon border gets its name from the Native American word Klamath, which means swiftness. The basin lays claim to majestic beauty and abundance of natural resources and more Bigfoot sightings than just about anywhere else in the country. But the crown jewel of the watershed does indeed exemplify effortless speed. The Klamath River is so swift, in fact, that early entrepreneurs envisioned harnessing her momentum to create power. The Klamath Basin is a relatively isolated area. It's far from the power centers of both Sacramento and, and Salem, and it's an area that's relatively lightly settled up until the early 20th century. But even before early settlers arrived, an ancient people known as the Klamath tribes thrived in this region for centuries. The river starts here in our homeland. All of the rivers, they all flow down eventually into Klamath Lake here, and Klamath Lake is where Klamath River starts. Salmon's been here since we've been here. You know, the creator uh, placed salmon here, uh, and it, it was put here uh, for the subsistence uh, of our people. Uh, we've always harvested that, that fish from these rivers here. Uh, it's our most important resource that we have is, is fish. And it's the reason I'm standing here today. If it wasn't for fish, if it wasn't for salmon, if it wasn't for chawam, I wouldn't be here today. My people wouldn't have survived here. Charles Chicken Little here, reminding you that flooding doesn't just affect people who live in a flood zone. No, it affects other people too. People who have jobs, for example. People who get sick, and even people who need to eat. When roads flood, people can't get to homes, businesses, or hospitals. That's why the Santa Clara Valley Water District is out clearing waterways, maintaining levees, and repairing banks to minimize the chances of flooding. For flood safety tips, visit valleywater.org.